I'm going to show you a useful application of a do while loop. I want the user to enter a number and only a number. A do loop can be used to repeatedly prompt the user if the data is invalid. I'm also going to show you why a do loop is called a condition controlled loop. You might remember that a for next loop is called a count controlled loop. Let's write some code. Let me show you something which might strike you as rather silly, but it makes a very important point. I'm using an input box function to prompt the user to type in their name. But the name must be Kevin. So I've placed this instruction inside a do while loop. And look at my exit condition. Do while st name is not equal to Kevin. When we drop out of the loop, I simply output the name that was entered. Let's give it a try. I'll try John. That's no good. Ben? Nope. Enzo? Anything I type is invalid unless it's Kevin. You can see why this is called a condition controlled loop rather than a count controlled loop. I'm not incrementing a variable to determine how many times I pass through the loop. There's no loop counter involved. Let me show you another approach. Do while true equals true. I could have just as easily said do while one is equal to one. That might strike you as a rather ridiculous exit condition because one always equals one. Essentially what I've written here is an infinite loop. True equals true is more typical in fact, I can just say do while true. It means exactly the same thing. But if I have an infinite loop, well, how do I get out of it? I can do this. I capture the input, test it to see if it's what I'm looking for. And if it is, then I force an exit from the do loop by using the command exit do. Once again, you can see that I'm not counting my way through the loop. I'm exiting the loop in a different way. So how is all of this useful? Well, as I said, I want to write a program to prompt the user to enter a number and only a number. Take a look at this. I've declared two variables, one called stAge, because I want to capture the user's age, but notice I've declared it as a string. And then I've declared another variable called iAge, which is an integer. I'm prompting the user to enter their age, and I'm assigning the value to stAge. This is a temporary measure so that I can test stAge. And look at my exit condition. Do while is numeric stAge equals false. In other words, while whatever the user types in cannot be converted into a number. To understand this, you need to appreciate that the input box function always captures a string. So, for example, if I'm prompted to type a number and I type, let's say, 59, I'm actually typing the string 5, 9. If I attempt to assign that string to a numeric variable like i age, it'll be fine. Visual Basic will do something called implicit type conversion. It will automatically convert it into an integer because it can. For example, this line of code will be absolutely fine as long as the user types in a string that can be converted into an integer. If, however, when this line of code executes, the user types in a string like hello, 
it will crash the program because Visual Basic can't automatically convert that string into something we can save into an integer variable. I'm trying to prevent my program crashing for that reason. So instead, I'm asking the user to type in their age, but I'm storing it into a string variable. It doesn't matter what they type, when we assign it to a string variable, it'll work. But because I want a number, I keep asking the user to type something until such time as I can convert it into a number. And that's what is numeric is telling me, whether or not a variable's contents can be converted into a number. I could ask the same question in a slightly different way, like this for example. Do while is numeric is not equal to true. It means the same thing as do while is numeric equals false. I can even ask the question like this. Do while not is numeric. It's the same exit condition, just phrased in a different way. I'm using a logical operator this time instead of a relational operator. It really is a case of take your pick. So we are repeatedly prompting the user to type in something we can convert into a number and when the user finally types in something that we can convert into a number, we do so. I'm using one of the type conversion functions this time, cint. That's short for convert to integer. So I'm converting this string into an integer and I know that this line of code is not going to crash because we wouldn't have got this far in the program unless the user typed in something that I could convert. This is called explicit type conversion. It's also called casting when we change the data from one data type to another. Let's give it a try. I'll start with some text. That's invalid, so I'm being prompted again. Let's try some different text. Again, I didn't type something which can be converted into a number, so the loop continues. Let's try typing nothing at all. I'll just click OK. Well, that's no good either, because that's what we call a zero-length string. Think of a pair of quotes with nothing in between. If I press the cancel button, again, that's invalid. I can't get out of this until I type something that can be converted into a number. Remember, that might look like 123, but it's actually the string 123. But it's a string that can be converted into a number. So we drop out of the loop, convert the input into a number, store it in IH, and then display it in a message box. So there you go, a condition controlled do while loop, which I'm using to capture input and validate it at the same time.